Exactly the American pragmatic physicist I didn't want but needed. Buff physics Adam Driver's words are laws of life to live by. This guy is so damn funny, charming, and smart. This dude just saved my life. Thanks, Dario. For real. Thanks to Dario, I made it out of the hood. You are a genius. Bruh. A genius? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about there, bud. I feel more like a Roomba stuck in a corner than a genius. But that did get me thinking. We like to believe that talent or intelligence is something fixed. Like you're either born good at something or you're not. But what if that's not the case? What other factors influence how good anyone can become at anything? If you're new here, thank you for clicking. My name is Dara Tringali. I'm 22 years old. I'm a physics PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder. So yeah, some people are just naturally gifted at stuff. Like that one friend who loves showing everybody that he's always been able to do a backflip. Or your friend that finishes a math test in 10 minutes and then makes it clear to everybody around them that they are done. Now, unlike some of my friends, I suck big old balls at test taking. I'm usually the last person to finish an exam rather than the first. But you know what's something I suck at even more? Drawing. If there were artistic genes in my family, they did not get passed down to me. And unfortunately for you, I'm going to prove that. Okay, let's see what we're drawing. We are doing a brain cooking. Okay. I have no clue how to do this. But, uh, I guess let's send it. It's like a, a box. And it's got to have the time on it, right? So time is going to be 420, obviously. How do we make the brain cook? The brain's got to be cooking. Oh my god. I have a better idea. We'll get back to that in a minute. The point I want to make here is that there's more to a genius than innate talent. Your environment or surroundings have a huge impact on how much you can grow and in what. If you're raised in a household that values learning, you just have access to good teachers, or you have surrounded yourself with people who challenge you in a certain area, you're way more likely to develop a skill. For example, Einstein. Now I'm not gonna argue that he wasn't a mathematical prodigy. He was. Bro mastered Calc 3 at like age 14, I think. So all those stories you hear where they're like, oh, he was a bad student in school. Einstein was a bad student. They're just not true. Anyways, the point I want to make here though is that his environment actually played a huge role in his success. When he graduated from Zurich Polytechnic in 1900, he could not find a job in academia. And after two years or 1902, he actually settled on a job in a Swiss patent office. You might be like, oh, there's literally no way that's good for him. But no, it's because he found that he could finish his office work so quickly that he was able to spend most of his time still on research. And that actually led to his miracle year in 1905 where he published papers on things like E equals MC squared and special relativity. So yeah, those papers came out in a patent office. So the potential was always there, but it took having the right environment for him to harness that. But there was one other factor that mattered, not just for Einstein, but for everyone who is the best of the best at anything from athletics to academics, and that is they actually wanted to learn and improve. But not just that, but they have the drive to work damn hard at it. And that's what really separates people who are the best or geniuses from others. It's the fact that they care enough to put in the work even when they doubt themselves. Okay, I am really doubt myself here. But the goal here is to have Brainy over here hit a drop back three on Jeremy, our defender. But, uh, but yeah, the, we're, we're going to work on that. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the last time I cared about drawing anything. And that was, God, when was that? That was probably, that was like elementary school, second grade. We would do a coloring contest every year where everybody in your entire grade would have to fill in like this turkey shaped like a hand. I'm sure some of you have seen those. That you just do your hand, it's shaped like a turkey. And then you would color that in and the classroom would vote on the best one. And then the winners of every classroom would go against each other. And if you won that, you won like some prize. I don't know. I don't know what the prize was. But I am very competitive. In second grade, me really wanted to win this contest. And I had a good strategy on how to do it. I was the first person in my grade to realize the power when coloring something in. I would outline something in marker. If I want to do brown, I'd do a brown marker on the outside of what I want to color and then do crayon on the inside. And it would look clean. It was coming out nice. But there was one flaw 
that I had that really <laughs> that caused me not to win. And that was that I also happened to discover whiteout at the same time. That was a major problem because I made a mistake. I made a mistake originally. And I was like, oh shoot, how do I fix this? So I went to teacher and I was like, oh man, I made a mistake on my drawing. What can I do? Do I have to get a new one? She was like, I got you. Let me show you this thing I got. She whips out this little bottle with the, the, the white stuff in it, dabs it on my paper. And it's like, you're all good. Color over it. I was blown away by this. This is the first time I'd ever seen Whiteout, that this thing existed. And I was so amazed by this, this thing that I could use to fix any mistake I made that I just, I, I want an excuse to use it again. And I think that was my biggest problem because then I started making mistakes on purpose so I could go up to the teacher and use the whiteout again. So by the time I got to the end, even though I had this brilliant strategy of marker and crayon, when we got to judging, I ended up winning my classroom still because from far away, you couldn't tell that I was using whiteout everywhere. But then when it got to judging against all the classrooms, they did a very close up judging of all the drawings and you could just see white out everywhere just marks of intentional mistakes that i would make just so i could use white out again so i think that defeated me a lot but uh but yeah that was probably the last time i cared about drawing so while i may never be a good artist i've actually become decent at skills i've cared about learning from public speaking to doing research and for a kid who was told in middle school that he shouldn't take any advanced math or science classes, I've realized what matters a lot more is how much you are willing to learn and to not let other people's opinions stop you. So what can you do if you want to get better at something, but you feel like you just have no talent for it at all? First, stop comparing yourself to people that put thousands of hours into their craft. That's like comparing your first gym session to someone who looks like they were sculpted by the gods. It's easy to feel behind when you only see results and not the work that went into it. Instead, focus on improving little by little. Small, consistent progress will add up over time. And I think the best quote I've heard on this is try to be 1% better every day. Second, challenge yourself. If you're always staying in your comfort zone, you are never giving yourself a chance to grow. Learning is uncomfortable. So if you feel like that, it's a good sign. It means you're stretching your abilities. And third, be patient. No one gets good overnight, and anyone that tells you otherwise is either lying to you or trying to sell you an online course with guaranteed results. So just keep putting the work, and eventually, you'll look back and realize how far you've come. I don't think I'm a genius. I'm actually very confident I'm not, and I don't think most people who get called that actually are. But what I do know is that the people who seem effortlessly good at something have usually put in a lot more work than you might expect. I feel like I stop here, because I have no clue what I am doing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you a brain cooking. Now, this may not be conventionally what you think of when you see brain cooking. He is not physically making food or anything, but he is certainly cooking in his own relative way. He is stepping right over the defender and he's hitting a clean shot. You know that's going in. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this drawing, but uh, I'm never doing this again. In all seriousness, if you ever feel like you're not good enough or not smart enough as everyone around you, good. That's how you're going to get better. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And if you're willing to put in the work, then you're already on the right track. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.